again. So, okay. So, what are we going to talk about shoe today? Then? Shoe What's from the shoe box? Okay, yeah. Let's go to the shoe box. Okay, so the first question in the shoe box, everybody can hear okay? Um, is it essential to notice or pay attention to what it is that takes me out of presence? Hmm. Yeah. It, it, it's wonderful that I really don't know those questions in advance. I don't really want to know. <laughs> okay. So what is it good to know what takes me out of presence? Okay. The, well, the, the, moment I'm, the moment I'm in presence, I have transcended the mind that works, uh, works, in, that works in duality. And uh, that's the objective, that's the goal, is to transcend my own mind, that uh, the component of my own mind that seems to be talking to me in my head. It's like a little monkey telling me stuff. So if uh, once, I have, once I have transcended my own mind, um, I could look back and say, oh, oh my God, what is it that, uh, what is it that took me out of presence before? And as soon as I ask that question, my mind kicks in again. <laughs> and there is, <laughs> there is nothing wrong with the interaction of the mind, no mind. Some of you know, I, I usually show the mind this way. It's past and, uh, past and future and the, the no mind I show it this way in an angle to it. So once I'm, uh, once we are in presence, chances are that question is not going to come up. If, uh, if something takes us out of presence, I can ask that question. And the answer is very paradoxical. Do I really want to know what takes me out of presence? Uh, <clears throat> um, the, the, the paradox is such that there is nothing wrong with knowing what takes me out of presence. The, practically, the problem is the moment I want to know that, I get an answer that I'm reacting, I'm generally reacting to Mary that makes me a coffee or something like that. Okay, that makes get me out of presence. But then the problem is then the mind won't, usually will not shut up and continue. And, you know, Mary always does that, and she should know I like espresso coffee instead of drip coffee. And <laughs> I, I want, uh, you know, I want a type of milk. I want kosher milk. And, uh, <laughs> 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 I know. I know. <laughs> it's like kosher pork. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there is, there is this interaction with the two uh, realities, and... Uh, interacting in the true realities is fine. The danger lies in the mind actually answering the question. Uh, I want to know what takes me out of, uh, out of presence. And then the, the mind answers and now stores it away as here it is something important. Mary making coffee takes me out of presence. Okay. So what have I accomplished? I, there's the thought called Mary take me Mary doesn't make the coffee, right? <laughs> and now I have to transcend that thought that I was asking at the first place. So I, I got my answer, but now I have something else to transcend. So <laughs> <laughs> generally speaking, it's not a good idea to focus on what takes me out of presence because it, it lends itself to explanation. It lends itself to including the mind too much. It lends itself to psychology, nothing wrong with psychology. It lends itself to story. Oh my God, I shouldn't have married Mary because she, <laughs> she doesn't know about kosher milk. <laughs> I shouldn't have. So, I, don't, I also don't know what kosher milk is. Neither do I. I just, I just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it, it's very important for us to chuckle a lot during this uh, uh, interaction because the uh, uh, 
this is such a serious subject that it only works if we're uh, really not serious. <laughs> so, yes, I can ask the question, what takes me out of presence? And I might, I might even get an answer. If I do get an answer, it's absolutely essential to immediately transcend the answer. So I will not let the monkey loose in my head to tell me stories about what the answer, what the consequences of those answers are. However, <laughs> however, in a, in, a, in a situation of a, of a relationship, let's say a, a husband and wife or what have you, uh, that's that's a slightly different answer. Uh, if if uh, if someone is in a relationship and uh, uh, the couple or one of the person decided that they want to be on fast track, fast track to awakening, the relationship. Uh, can be used to for that relationships could be a fast track to awakening because why is that because uh, i i'm not only have to transcend or bypass my own mind my own monkey in my own head but now i have to transcend and uh, bypass the monkey monkey in her head or his head whatever is appropriate so i have two different mind to bypass that gives us extra opportunity as more to tr more to transcend, more to bypass, therefore more practice. That's one. Two. Let's say uh, couples usually have habits, like you know. Uh, every time I, I I remember this might be a weird story, but <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, my father used to go and uh, uh, drink with his buddies every Sunday morning. He didn't go to church. He, he, went, <laughs> he, he went drinking with his friends. So he got he got a bed drunk, and every time he came home every Sunday, it was very predictable that his wife, my stepmother, was was saying, "I I'm not going to serve a drunk man lunch," right? So that was a very predictable event. So uh, let's say there is a interaction between couples that you kind of know how she or he is going to react to something. Then that reaction, you know that that reaction or that behavior is going to take you out of presence, which was the question, right? Knowing what will take me out of presence is a huge benefit because, okay, now she's going to come home and yell at me. Okay, so she enters the door, I go very quickly bypass. <laughs> and stay there and then what I have done at this moment knowingly um, I I know what would take me out of presence and I bypass in advance so in that case it was really beneficial to know what took me out of presence because it encouraged me to uh, quickly, sharply go into the body and transcend, bypass. Also, also what it does is it takes the couple out of the normal behavior. So every time she knocks on the door, I already know she's coming home and she's going to argue with me and I'm going to say something nasty. So instead of that, I know I'm gonna react, I go bypass, <laughs> and she or he will be surprised that, oh, I'm not, re that dude is not reacting. So this is the, um, in the events, in the events, in the, in the event of a couple's practice, couple's practice is the fast track to awakening. In, in the event of a couple's practice, it's very good to know what takes me out of presence. A predictable behavior or my own predictable reaction. Something predictable is coming, but you know what? I'm going to make it not predictable. Oops, I bypass him. <laughs> and she walks in or he walks in. Says, wow. What, what's going on? You know, he usually reacts nasty. 
where she usually reacts nasty and there's, there's no such a thing. So, so all of a sudden the relationship starts shifting, the possibilities start shifting. So the answer is in the event of a couple's relation, in a couple's uh, awakening practice, the fast track, it's very good to know what takes me out of presence. In the event, I want to know what is my own monkey telling me when I react, it's rather not. It's rather good just to bypass quickly. Uh, it's, if you want to know, it's fine, but uh, it's not advisable because once the monkey start talking, it will bring in more thoughts. So I hope that's, is it clear? Yeah. Okay. And now I'll move to, to go sharp, sharply inside. Sharply inside. Every time yeah. you want kosher milk. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, uh, absolutely. Kosher bacon too. 